So, hello there. This is a message intended for the ears of the modern progressive activist. We all know the type. The type who need trauma centers when speeches that they don't agree with but they didn't listen to are allowed to go on despite their most ardent protests. Those who are blocking up highways. <laughs> Those who kick press out of their safe space protest zones set up on public grounds. We all know the type. Though this message will never reach their ears because they are all cloistered in their safe spaces, garbed in emotional bubble wrap which prohibits any ideas or speech which might offend or trigger or traumatize them by virtue of not aligning perfectly with their idealistic and ideological view of the world, I sort of feel that it needs to be said, even if just for the sake of saying it. So hello progressive activists, it's your old pal Nick, the Wizard of Cause. You know, the former professional liberal activist, the one who used to spend 18 hour days in dangerous parts of dangerous cities just trying to help certain populations of working class individuals to elevate their standing in the world. I thought I'd sit down and have this little conversation with you because I think there's a few things that need to be brought to your attention. The first and foremost of them is that you're a fucking embarrassment. You're an embarrassment to liberalism, you're an embarrassment to the liberal intellectual tradition, to the western intellectual tradition, to the inherited intellectual tradition of the enlightenment. You're an embarrassment to the very concept of activism and I'm going to tell you why. Firstly, let's take a look at what the liberal intellectual tradition that I'm speaking of really sort of means. And I'm not going to go too deep into any sort of, you know, real history about the thing, and more sort of give you a general understanding of what it means to be a liberal, and has been. Liberalism has traditionally been one of a big tent. It's the idea that all voices should be welcome and heard. This used to be the way of it because it used to be that conservatism was sort of a more stridently traditionalist way of thinking, one which had established that there are certain correct ways of doing things and that these are the ways that we need to hold on to lest we lose our way in some sort of fanciful notions about what the future could be. Liberals in turn said we should consider what the future could be and try and make our way towards it, make progress. This is the sort of place that the word progressive even really came from. Now as part of that, an open and unabashed free exchange of ideas was always held as a central philosophical and to a good extent political ethos. This is what proud liberals have always sort of held close. Free speech is absolute. It's a must. We must not censor ideas simply because we do not like them or because we find them harmful and especially not because we find them wrong. Our obligation as people who have beliefs is to allow our opposition to be heard and then to respond to them. Because after all, if you as a strident progressive activist who's going to change the world with your really righteous ideas is absolutely certain of these ideas, well then, hmm, you're going to need to prove it. Your self-righteousness and your screaming, especially that idiotic screaming about we have nothing to lose but our chains by people who are not wearing chains, by people who are living on college campuses, pursuing degrees, and in all likelihood not having to support themselves. This is not engendering any progressive or liberal ideas to anyone really. This is just posturing. This is feeling good and feeling righteous and feeling like you matter after living through a life of surplus. This is not the intellectual tradition. The intellectual tradition is one to allow your opponent to speak and then presenting your ideas in kind. Because if you are certain that your ideas are right, you shouldn't be afraid of dissent. But I'm digressing a little bit here. That's not necessarily why you're an embarrassment. You're an embarrassment because you think things like blocking up highways, mobbing events and becoming violent, interrupting, disrupting, and 
as you love to chant it, shutting them down is in somehow and some way an intellectual or political victory. Do you want to know what that kind of activism really looks like to the public? And keep in mind, you don't have to convince yourself of your cohorts. It's the public who's watching that need to be convinced. Do you know what that looks like? That looks like thuggish barbarism. That looks like the act of an emotional simpleton who, because they can't get their way in every turn, they're going to shut everything down. Make sure nothing can happen. No one can have anything because I can't have my way. That is not a way you win an argument. That is actually a way to lose an argument. I want to express this right now to the social justice progressive scene because I feel it's really just one of the more awe-inspiring aspects of their movement. And it has nothing to do with them making progress in terms of making certain pronouns legally enforceable or perhaps establishing bathroom rights for anyone. No, no, no. The fascinating thing is that in what used to be entrenched adversaries, those between liberal and conservative persuasions, those who used to have endless arguments about virtues of individualist free markets versus collectivist social good, those two once diametrically opposed sides have largely found increasing levels of overlap, alliances, even friendships, all because of you. In your efforts to tamp down, stamp out any speech you deem toxic or problematic or harmful, in your efforts to sanitize discussion and thought, as well as literature, art, science, and media, to conform and comport itself according to your ideological precepts, you have created alliances none of us could have ever dreamed. Again, this is not how you win an argument or advance an idea. This is how you end the idea and lose the argument. Because what you've done, in effect, is you've created a situation where it's you versus the world. Well done, progressives. And the mainstream of our society is starting to catch on as well. From the safe spaces and idiocy you were unleashing on college campuses, with your protests, blocking of the doors of public speeches, setting up of trauma centers where you can hold hands in color after you've been made aware that someone you disagree with was allowed to express their opinion somewhere, as well as blocking up highways, setting fires, pulling fire alarms, starting fights, and all of these other barbaric and incivil actions. Once you carried all of these out, you have driven more and more people away from you. Even the mainstream press is now starting to ask if your feminist rape hysteria, if your safe spaces, if your language sanitization on college campuses isn't something that is itself, as you put it, oh, problematic. You are undoing yourselves. But to get back to the point, you are also horrendously embarrassing those of us who have actually fought for social progress. You are making a mockery of the works of people who have come long before you, and those whose activism you seem to feel you were entitled to inherit. Your attempts to spurn a new civil rights movement basing it on very facile identity issues, microaggressions and so on, and then taking such to the broader political stage feeling that violent outbursts and mob actions are equal to these sorts of marches and demonstrations which paved the way for our modern society. You were undoing all of the good work that has come before you. You were attempting to segregate what your predecessors sought to desegregate. You were attempting to silence voices when your predecessors had attempted to liberate them. And furthermore, you are undoing all notions of civility and social, societal, civic action by thinking that simply thumping your chest and screaming at the top of your lungs 
just drowning out anyone who else who may wish to uh, oppose your views, that somehow you're winning. Those of us who know what they're doing know that if we are right about what we believe, and that we are willing to argue against those who are in our opposition, that it proves us not only to let our opposition speak and to listen to them, but also to elevate their voices. Because there's no convincing them more times than not. There is the convincing of those who are watching on, and you are being woefully unaware of who's watching them. Your actions have been gross. Your actions have been revolting. Cringe-inducing to the highest degree. And yet, so often, by virtue of nothing more than your professed identity, everyone else is expected to buy into your rhetoric. And not only that, but it is expected to ignore and participate in the silencing of your opposition. With your every action, you are undoing yourselves, and with your every action, you are embarrassing every individual who has come before you, who has gone out to do real work, every individual who is out there now trying to do good work. I'm speaking to you now, actually, as a Bernie Sanders supporter myself. Now, I like Bernie Sanders. I like his positions on many issues. I like his policy proposals. I believe that he's a genuine politician who means what he says. I respect these things. And at every step along the way, as you stand out there with your placards waiting to punch the first person who disagrees with you, or waiting to pull a fire alarm, perhaps, when a speaker from a particular conservative publication, or maybe even just an individual who disagrees with your very definitions of things such as feminism and social progress. The moments you're trying to silence them, at every moment, you are not only embarrassing me, but you're embarrassing the broader movement of actual liberal progress. You're embarrassing progressives, and you're embarrassing liberalism. You're embarrassing the candidate you claim to want to see elected to office. There are no net benefits to anything you're doing. I suppose, if anything, if any of you actually manage to hear these words and you're not so horribly triggered, you need to run back to your adult coloring books and your blankies. I would suggest that you stop what you're doing, take a step back, and critically analyze the intellectual validity and merit of your actions and your rhetoric. Maybe drop the gender studies and critical race theory shit for a while, and maybe try to adopt more classical, anthropological, and sociological considerations. If you want to be a politico, consider the political ramifications of your actions and those of your peers. But if you're not willing to do this, if you're going to continue down the path you're going, get ready. Because as I said before, you forged alliances that those within said alliances could have never dreamed possible even 10 years ago. And you made it so that it's you versus the world. And if there's one thing we know, the world always wins. Best of luck to you. I sincerely hope you grow up.